Hey, we're at a special advance, like two weeks greeting for going in style. You, <laughs> you said the tickets were free? Yeah, it was a free nice. screening. But you totally, like, the sing experience <laughs> for sc free screenings was like, um, uh, simultaneously better and worse because there was a lot of annoying kids at that. So it was worse in that department. Uh -huh. But it was better because the sing screening had like the Russian bodyguards that were like guarding the doors and like, no cell phones, please. And like standing there like sunglasses by the screen, making sure no one's filming it as there's this dancing koala on screen. In this movie, they didn't even tear our tickets. There was like no bodyguards at all. <laughs> Considering we were the youngest people in the theater by we easily were. 20 years, yeah. I have to figure they assume no one in the theater will be technologically savvy enough to like bootleg it. <laughs> Just ironic given the movie, what the movie's about. <laughs> Sneak in like a big VCR yeah. camera. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, so they didn't care. Also, they had this, there was no like annoying audience members because it wasn't a bunch of like kids and their parents there at a free screening making a lot of noise like it was it was a lot of old people who were there just to watch a movie yeah there was a lady behind me who was completely convinced that christopher lloyd was abe vigoda but she only mentioned it like three times i heard that on the way out someone mm. mentioning abe vigoda it is weird what gets free <laughs> advanced screenings in springfield because it's not places like st louis and like sometimes Champagne even, or up near Chicago, get way more than we do in terms of that. We, we get that just every now and then they'll be like, going in style, or sing, or mm -hmm. no escape. <laughs> For this movie, it made a little bit of sense to me. Yeah, it was packed in there. It was a delight, but mm. like I haven't heard boo about it. Mm -hmm. And so I have to figure that maybe they like figured that word of mouth would go out amongst mm -hmm. the old people to be yeah. like, oh, you should go see this movie. Uh huh. I mean, I, I plan on telling my mom that she should take my dad to go see it. I'm actually planning on doing something with my dad. <laughs> like, my dad would really like this. And at first, I was like, because I got I came here to get the tickets yesterday, and because I had to show this like little barcode and everything, and so they gave me the tickets, and they also gave me two. It, at first, I thought these were the movie tickets, like these two admit one things. <laughs> this is mine. Would, well, here's the thing: like, are you gonna be in Champagne between April 10th and 13th, which is the only place you can use this between Monday and Thursday? Uh, okay, well, yeah, give those to Allison. <laughs> See, there's a catch. <laughs> Champagne, Illinois, is about 80 minutes away. It's where Allison and Ed live, so I guess if Allison and Ed want to go see. <laughs> going in style on these specific dates. They should, they'd VIP like it. VIP passes. Yeah, this movie wasn't bad. It was adorable. This movie is kind of the textbook definition of it's perfectly harmless. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of movies like this, honestly, whether it's this or like The Crew or The Bucket List or like Last Vegas or something like that. Uh -huh. I've never seen the original going in style. In fact, when I first saw the trailer for this, I forgot there even was an original. Like, the originals with George Burns, I, I hear it's good, I've just mm -hmm. never seen it. Like, I've never seen that one, but I've seen, like, fucking Just You and Me Kid, the one with him and Brooke Shields, that's not good. <laughs> that's supposed to be a couple, are they? <laughs> no, that would have made it amazing. Okay, because I was about to say. <laughs> I had planned on Googling the woman in this movie to see how much younger than Alan Arkin she was. because she, And Margaret? Yeah, she, she's looking good. She looks great. I wish this movie had more Anne Margaret in it, honestly. <laughs> I thought she could have used a lot more screen time in this film, but mm -hmm. she made the most of the scenes she was in. She doesn't look a day older than she did back in Grumpy Old Man. <laughs> I just loved seeing Anne Margaret on screen again. We were having fun before the movie Googling people's heights because oh, yeah, the poster yeah. for it is them against the height wall. And we're like, hmm, I wonder Alan Arkin is shorter than the height wall. And Morgan it, Freeman is taller than the height wall. And it was wrong. And Mike O'Kane is exactly <laughs> the same height. Would this be your favorite Zach Braff film? Yeah. <laughs> Easily my favorite Zach Braff film. God, this was artsy. <laughs> this was charming. It was Jackie Cation calls movies like this mingling wrinkles, where mm -hmm. like old people living life and having sex with each other. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love them. No, this is a likable film, honestly. It's, I think it's target demographic, as they, they seem to really like it. And even if we were in a theater seeing this by ourselves on a Thursday night, 
I would say the same thing. I'm like, its target demographic is going to like this, but the movie's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of big laughs out of it. I, I don't know how much it compares the original to the original. And any kind of, like, complaint I would have towards the movie, it, it's still pretty funny. Like, it's the cast is... You go into a movie like this figuring that guys like Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman and Alan Arkin are going to have really good chemistry together. Uh-huh. And they do. Yeah. Like, honestly, even before it gets to the bank robbery, I could have just watched a movie about this, these this three them, guys. like, sniping at each other and being besties. Yeah, it, honestly. Like eating pie. In eating pie, and there's, like, the sat- sassy, like, flow-type waitress. <laughs> she was the, um, uh, wearing an Egger suit. She was that mm. lady from Men in Black. Oh! That suit. Yeah, okay, yeah. It took me a second, too. I'm like, oh, Egger suit. Yeah. Um, it, it, for, for a while, in the beginning, I was like, not that it takes a while for the bank plot to come into the movie, but for a while I, I honestly kind of forgot that that's where the movie was going because I I sort of wasn't really invested in just watching these three guys deal with like their money issues and watching shit like The Bachelor and snarking at it. Like mm-hmm. I was having a lot of fun watching that and then when it got to the bank, oh right, this is going to be a bank robbery movie, okay. <laughs> and even that was, was good. Like, uh, Whenever it gets to a point in the movie where you think they're going to do something, like, really lazy, it's it's kind of fine about it. Like, when they start smoking pot, mm-hmm. like, I was sitting there like, okay, is this going to go into, like, ten minutes and it's going to turn into, like, they're rolling on the ground barking or doing something <laughs> weird because yeah, they listen, just smoked they were just pot. cute and had their heads out the window yeah. the car right home. And that was, like, 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. He's, like, got his head out the window, like, okay, all right, fine. <laughs> and, like, even, like, uh... They do, you see it in the trailer where, like, they're doing target practice and, like, Alan Arkin shoots a gun and just flies backwards. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, that's silly, but that's, like, a second of the movie. Yeah. Um, I was consistently invested in the characters in this film. It's like, they get fucked over bad at the beginning of this. Yeah. Like, really fucking bad. And that's what kind of made me worried about this movie, is because it seemed like a, you know, capital letters, things to say about society sort of movie. Because, <laughs> they, you know, they like they lose their pension, and, like, the bank, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's society's job to take care of its elderly. Uh-huh. Um, but it's, that, that kind of took a backseat to, like, a adorable buddy slash heist type movie it does because i think the movie is aware that if you want to see a really provocative film about the whole banking industry then you'd probably better off watching like the big short or something like that than a movie that's you know grumpy old men meets heat (laughs) 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 Um, i feel like that's how it was pitched (laughs) yeah yeah exactly um I was. It was great seeing Matt Dillon back on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Like people kept showing up and they're like, "Oh, mm-hmm. ooh. Matt Peter, Peter Sarah Fanwitz. Matt Dillon's the FBI agent who's investigating it, and Dave and or I'm sorry, Brian and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. How like we we're baffled by the fact that Tony Goldwyn has not aged a day since the '80s. Mm-hmm. I can kind of say that about Matt Dillon. Yeah, Matt Dillon looks exactly like he did in something about Mary. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. <laughs> but goddamn, I just love seeing Matt Dillon and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, the first season of Wayward Pines, like, give that a watch. It's fucking amazing. I haven't really seen the second season, but I haven't heard great things about that. But Matt Dillon's not in that from what I understand. Yeah, let's ignore the second season. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'll like, get bored one day and watch it. Uh, I, I like it when Peter Serafana shows up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because... First of all, it reminds me of the reason I remember his name every single time because there's an outtake from Shaun of the Dead uh-huh. where they turn around and they go, Peter Serafanowitz. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, he's really good at not having an English accent. Like, to the yeah, point that you, yeah. it takes you a second to recognize him because he just sounds like some American dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that too. And did you have any... Uh, and th- that plot was done... Yeah, was done well. he played like was, the deadbeat dad yeah. of Michael Caine's mm-hmm. um, granddaughter. Did you have any complaints about the film? Um, there were a couple line reads that I disagreed with, mm-hmm. uh, especially off of Morgan Freeman. But mm-hmm. I think that he was playing kind of a, a goofy guy because mm-hmm. like his downfall sort of ended up being like, you know how. Um, how much he loved his granddaughter, yeah. which was just so cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I spent a lot of the movie going like, 
because there was like the, the, the adorable granddaughter. Mm -hmm. There was um, the adorable granddaughter. There was this puppy that kept showing up. It was like mm -hmm. the tiny little like pug pug guy. And then there was the, the three of them kvetching about The Bachelor, which I hope to be when I am that old. I feel like that'll be like you and Dave and, and Brian just sitting and watching The Bachelor and bitching about there their bags. Okay, I, I, I know my mind is going to slip at some point. <laughs> it's not going to slip enough to where I'm sitting there watching reality television. Reality television is amazing. Oh, God. But I, anyway, you, you, you had asked if I if had any problems with this movie, and I really kind of didn't. It, was, it wasn't like Oscar worthy or anything, no. but it made me laugh I mean, a bunch of times. <laughs> it was adorable, so I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. The movie, I, I didn't care much for the heist scene, honestly. Uh -huh. um, again, that's just something. It's not making me take the movie down several notches or anything like that. The, the actual heist scene itself, mm -hmm. I didn't. There was this silly stuff with the bank manager I thought was kind of dumb. They could have lost that character completely. Oh my god, yeah. They could have lost that character. And the mistake that they make that almost gets them caught, I thought was pretty dumb. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 it felt less like something that he actually would have done in that given moment and more like they need him to do something stupid so mm -hmm. that they'll almost get caught. Yeah. Cause and it's like I, this is little girl. It's like, you could have my doll, mister. And he like stops his bank robbery yeah. to go over and like talk to her. It's like, I don't care how much you love your granddaughter. You're not going to do that in the middle of your bank robbery. Right. I was totally thinking that too. Let alone wear your watch with your granddaughter's mm -hmm. face on it. Yeah. And, and I, I sat there the whole time. Like, I, I know they're not going to go to prison at the end of this movie, but it's like, I thought I, they might. I didn't think it would go that direction. Like mm -hmm. I, I wondered, but I was like, I, I don't think this is going to end like the producers or spoiler. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think it's going to end like that or like dog day afternoon or, or something like mainly because I was like, they, th these characters got, just get fucked over so bad at the beginning of this. I'm uh -huh. like, I don't think they're going to end it with them in prison. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought that what, what I suspected what was going to happen was they were going to get caught because they really weren't very good at bank robbing. Um, but then, you know, the newspapers would get a hold of their story and be like, these three old men got so oh, royally fucked over sure. that they had to rob a goddamn bank. Mm -hmm. Public opinion would turn the bank and be like, oh, just kidding. Here's your pensions and your oh, mortgage. Yeah, that, I, that I kind of wondered too. Because that but would I, make more sense. Because I feel like my, thinking about it, my main problem with the movie is how is Michael Caine going to pay his mortgage now? Mm -hmm. Because he still banks with that company. Mm -hmm. So once he's going to turn around and be like, just kidding, here's a million dollars to put in my checking account. You can go ahead and start drafting for my mortgage payments now. Yeah, I kind of had that problem with the ending of the movie Gold with mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey, where I was like, more so in that than this, because this is, it, it, it's light enough and it's silly enough that I'm like, okay, in this universe, he can probably still do something with his money. In a movie like Gold, I was like, dude, you got a lot of money at the end of this movie that you cannot do jack shit with. <laughs> Just keep going, get the steaks and champagnes. Yeah. <laughs> You're one kidney. Right. Yeah. Um, but, now, overall, I, I thought the movie was fine. Like, I, I got a lot of laughs out of this. There's a funny sequence where they're all robbing shit out of a grocery store. That was so... I don't know why they did that scene, but I'm so glad that they did. I, I am, too. And I, like... And I still thought it was really, really funny. Like, I'd seen stuff like that in, like, one of the Jackass movies did mm -hmm. that, where Knoxville goes in old robbing shit. Uh, um, he probably has balls hanging out of the bottom of his shorts or no, something. No, no, Honestly, it wasn't anything like that. It was, like, it was, it was one of the grandpa bits not in the movie dirty mm -hmm. grandpa but or bad grandpa it was bad grandpa was the knoxville yeah, one dirty I think. grandpa was the, one it was Robert the Niro Niro. one um no it was like uh yeah it's knoxville is dressed up like the old man he goes in there to like just put stuff under his shirt mm -hmm. and the security guard's like old oh, man you should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> it's pretty funny and you know like that's kind of the concept in this scene here but it was still funny <laughs> Knoxville stuff like that makes me laugh. Yeah. It's just like the later stuff where it was like he'd go into a grocery store and then get his like his huge prosthetic dick caught in a vending machine. <laughs> That's when like I couldn't possibly give a shit. I'm, I'm a dork like so I'd still laugh at that. He's like riding on one of those little grocery store horses and just like 
five sets of balls hanging out of the bottom of his pants. It's funny because all people's balls get long. Uh, <laughs> this movie did. This movie was. I mean, granted, it didn't go quite there, but like, <laughs> it does stuff with Christopher Lloyd in this movie where it's yeah. like, it's funny because he's old and crazy. It's funny because he's seen us. He doesn't remember his friends. I'm like, they really gotta stop putting him in charge of shit. Like, why is this guy the president of whatever company they're for? Well, they were Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus, where they make the craziest motherfucker in the world and put him in charge of the shit. Like, I mean, even that got a few laughs out of me. Probably because I just enjoyed seeing Christopher Lloyd yeah. back in something. Like, my fa one of my favorite jackass bits was the part where he put chocolate pudding in the diaper. Uh -huh. It was supposed to be shit, and he put it in a garbage can. He was dressed up like a... This wasn't even Knoxville. It was one of the other guys. He's walking around going, Oh, so hungry! Reaches in there, and he does this outside of a mall, and there's these two teen girls sitting behind him like, <laughs> They run inside. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just good comedy. <laughs> I at least see the point of that, but I yeah. like I prefer like you know the grocery store stuff and stuff. Oh yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, or like uh, who, whichever the one that used to just like strip off his clothes and just start dancing. Oh, Party Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like that the, stuff was good. The silly ones, not the gross ones. <laughs> also, an old lady. <laughs> I still even like some of the gross ones. The one where he went, the one where dude went into the hardware store and took a shit in one of the prop toilets. <laughs> Started reading a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to clean that up. Boys are gross. <laughs> <laughs> so you enjoyed the Diary of Volcano, I'm sure. Which one was Diary of Volcano? That was the one where they, it's basically exactly what it sounds like. They built the diorama around the one guy's ass <laughs> and then turned it upside down and then filmed it and just... You know, if, here's the thing. Like, there's something about that that works because... <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I am. And granted, it's for stupid reasons. But, like, <laughs> if I were to just see, like a second of just like uh, ass and pfft, like yeah okay impressive whatever it's the fact it makes them so happy <laughs> like there's just something infectious about well, that bless their hearts yes like there is something infectious about knoxville's laugh and all that <laughs> that just makes all of that stuff worth it <laughs> yeah, my problem is that i watched that uh jackass 2.5 yeah, was like oh, all the stuff that didn't yeah. work and it was really kind of depressing mm -hmm. and like they, they put the one guy that had like claustrophobia in, in a porta potty and like hoisted it up and he was like <laughs> crying and begging uh -huh. to get out so yeah. it just kind of put a damper on the whole enjoyment for me <laughs> but then like I, for me there is very little that brings me as much joy as watching bam margera get the shit scared out of him see like it when bad things happen to him well he's such a douchebag oh, i agree i got you we were at a, remember when we were at a con with him no you were weren't you there maybe like uh that if was... i had been there i think i would have remembered because um... i hate him <laughs> I love to hate him more than I love to hate anyone He was else. barely at his table. This was Days of the Dead Chicago, like uh -huh. two years ago. It was the one that Felissa Rose was at, because she's his sister-in-law. I don't think I saw that. I was at that one. You weren't at that one? No. no that was, was yes, you you were at that one, because I, I remember. It was the one where Derek Mears from Friday the 13th came up and bought one of our DVDs. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, one of the... Uh, we were like in this narrow hallway, and I, I do remember you were there for that because okay. I remember you being there when Derek I'll take a word for it. Those horror cons but especially just all run together sometimes. <laughs> I remember yeah. the one with the girl with the skeleton hand uh, bra. Oh yeah, that was... I remember the one where I got groped by the guy from <laughs> Dawn of the Dead. From Day of the Dead. Day of that the was, Dead, yeah, yeah. Joe Pilato. Um, the... <laughs> I remember the one with Name Dropper Bride. <laughs> Oh, that was a while ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the Days of the Dead Chicago was... Uh, he was down... Oh, he was barely there. He was uh -huh. he was down at the far end by Felissa Rose, and he was just decked out in bling. Like, <laughs> literally, he had like a thousand pounds worth of gold on him. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's just such a terrible person. <laughs> well, no, because like, he had that show where he was just so cruel to his parents oh, and yeah. to his uncle who turns to be like a pedophile or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So then, like, there's every once in a while, because he's afraid of snakes. snakes. 
Yeah. And so, like, my favorite, favorite sketch of all time was when they, they tricked him into getting the back of a trailer and then threw a bunch of snakes in yeah. him. And he flipped out, like, climbed on top of the truck. He's like, you guys are dicks. It's not funny. Yeah, fuck that dude. And he's, like, crying a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so good. <laughs> you got your ass branded. <laughs> <laughs> Any final? Listen to him and cry. <laughs> that's that. That's that's your mood music when you're trying to sleep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dave's sitting there like this is just disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! I see the confusion. Though there's a band called Him that Bam Margera is obsessed with, uh -huh. and it's like kind of emo. -y. The symbol's like a heart with like a cross through it. I'm pretty sure he's got like several tattoos of it. Yeah. So he'd go listen to him and cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's. that's Precious. I know so much about this man and I hate him. <laughs> That's how it always is. <laughs> I, right, like, yeah, like, yeah, I can think of, like, some people I'm not a huge fan of. I've seen a lot of their movies. <laughs> God. Did you ever watch, uh, what, CKY? No, but I saw that Haggard movie he did mm -hmm. when that came out on DVD. That was bad. I've got the CKY. I've got the three of the discs on DVD. Dude. I, well, I love everyone except for Bam Margera. Yeah. And I love to hate Bam Margera. <laughs> so you just got that on repeat. And Jillian <laughs> watching the musical episode of Buffy. Mm -hmm. He's probably still got that on repeat to this day. <laughs> Once more with feeling. Click. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> did you see they did um like because it's Buffy's twentieth anniversary this mm. year, so um so they're taking it off of Netflix to celebrate I guess, uh, <laughs> but they did like a it's on a, Hulu. They did a photo spread on uh, an Entertainment Weekly and speaking of people who look exactly the goddamn same, they all look exactly the goddamn I'm same. I'm sure, yeah. Ah, rich people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd recommend this movie. Yeah, you know, like it's it's fine, like it's uh. Is it, is it, you know, if it looks like it'd be something you're into, like, yeah, it's worth, like, a matinee screening mm -hmm. or something like that. If it's kind of, you know, iffy about it, it, at the least, it's worth a rental. Take your parents. You know. Yeah, it, it is that kind of movie. But it's not like a, you know, like a doddering, like, eh, hey, old people are people, too. It's like an actual, clever, old people are people, too, fun to watch for the older generation type movie. Yeah, at the, at the least, it's got some solid laughs in it. Because mm -hmm. the cast is really good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the cast is really good in the movie. But we don't have trailers, because this is a preview screening. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have shit to talk about in terms of trailers. The movie just started. <laughs> but, but it was one of those movies where people clap at the end, which always make me happy. That's... I've found that at, like, every preview screening uh -huh. no matter how good or bad the movie is like they saw it for free they're gonna <laughs> clap at the end <laughs> well, i love the clapping at the end we discussed this in the movie mm -hmm. first of all because i love clapping at things that can't hear me yeah and second of all because it makes dave so angry and there's no one in this world i love trolling more than my own husband <laughs> He gets so mad at, at movies that you know that's gonna happen. You know that if you're at like Rogue One, something like that, like you know, you know that if you're at like a Thursday night preview screening of something of a comic book movie or a Star Wars movie, <laughs> there's going to be applause at the end. I don't think that happened, and I'm not saying this to be a dick. I don't think that happened at Batman v Superman. <laughs> I recall it happening at Batman v Superman. Well, Brian and I, was it crowded when you guys saw it? Brian and I saw it on the preview screening. I don't even remember. All I remember about that movie is how mad I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just remember how confused Brian and I were. Because <laughs> Batman v Superman, that was one where David didn't talk for like the first 20 minutes of the review. Yeah. Which was funny. But it also meant that I had, uh, I had a lot of space to fill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that happens. Like, sometimes that'll happen for stuff for stuff Dave even likes. <laughs> like when we reviewed Moonlight, and he's like, I, it's a great movie, but uh, hell, I mean, I'm not... I'm not black. I don't have a <laughs> drug addicted mom like in this movie. I yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right. So um, I uh, what the fuck is tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna be at Ghost in the Shell, and then Friday, Boss Baby. Who's going to see Ghost in the Shell with you? I think Brian is. Yeah. I think Brian's seeing that. Um, and my little brother like loved the anime when I was growing up, mm -hmm. so I've seen it a couple times. But I I don't know that I care enough to have an opinion on it. And I, it's been so long since I've seen the original movie mm -hmm. that I might as well be going into this blind, honestly. I'm sure Brian has seen it way more recently than I have. Mm -hmm. 
but that's tomorrow. <laughs> Later.